What's in the box? A series where I stir my hand around in a box and pull out a random Star Wars comic or random Star Wars thing and talk about it. Let's go. Marvel Comics Group Star Wars issue number 46, published in 1981. A living nightmare stalks the universe, empire and rebel forces alike, helpless prey of the Dreadnought Devourer. Look at this cover. A giant mean neon Aladdin genie breaking a Dreadnought in half like Bo Jackson snapping a bat. This should be interesting and a little weird. Hold on, hold on. I'm coming to you from the future. I just got done reading this thing. And spoiler alert, this is the biggest bait and switch ever. This big ass spaceship snapping pink beast doesn't even appear in the comic and it certainly doesn't devour any dreadnoughts. What the fuck? Bait and switch. What's inside this does not match that. Imagine that you're a kid in 1981. You see this hell yeah metal comic cover on the shelf featuring a huge monster eating imperial ships like a New York strip. You open it up and you get this. Long ago in a galaxy far, far away. All right, let's jump in. Lando and Chewbacca are flying in the Millennium Falcon. They're trying to rescue Han Solo from Boba Fett. So this takes place post Empire Strikes Back, pre Return of the Jedi. They encounter a problem with the Falcon's hyperdrive, which causes them to enter another dimension. The dreams of Cody Sunchild. In this other dimension, they come across a floating city. They land, a monster attacks. This guy stops the monster with what looks like magic saying that I will not allow the taking of a single life here in my realm. Lando recognizes this guy. He says he saw him as a boy fighting against the Imperials. He even remembers his name. Lando's got a hell of a memory. Cody's son child. The guy says that is his name, but his name is the only thing linking him to that man of violence that he once was. The city is beautiful. Cody explains that Lando and Chewbacca are in another dimension and they must have pierced the wall of that dimension when the warp engine exploded. He says they can stay if they want to, but this place is a place of peace. They have to respect it as such. We play no games in our city of dreams, sir. You think that that's how that guy sounds? Our master son child has built a haven from the madness. Turned into a gruff cowboy. Be an incredible hunk of man in seven days. The Empire finds a small rip in the dimensional fabric, allowing them to cross over to the other dimension. We get a little flashback into Cody Sunchild's life. He says that he started to enjoy war for the sake of war. He enjoyed the killing and the rebellion, the revolution was just an excuse to indulge in, in that enjoyment. Everything in the city is not made of matter, it's made of psychic energy. The comic turns into a metal album, flashback of Cody on a little known world with a flame god. The subterranean primitives worshipped Cody as a god. Cody became super powerful, thus I dedicated myself to a quieter personal revolution in a galaxy gone mad. I reached down into myself, touched the unfolding power of the flame god. Here we choose to live as shining examples of all that man can be once he puts down his sword. This pisses off Lando. All this power and he builds a fantasy land, Lando says. He calls Cody a coward and smacks the mystical fantasy land pacifist. Be a slam dunker. Be a real elevator man. Amazing basketball booklet. Increases jumping ability six inches in six weeks. Lando's violence summoned like demons? as Cody calls them, the repressed horrors of his own soul. Pusillanimous? Pusillanimous? Hey, I learned a new word. Showing a lack of courage or determination. Timid, pusillanimous. All this pacifist bullshit really pisses Lando off. What good is your precious example when you're secure here and millions are enslaved on the other side? As we know, the Empire found a rip in the dimensional fabric and they begin to attack the city of dreams. Chewbacca seems to kind of want to stay here. There's another Wookiee. He kind of gets it. But 
He and Lando jet out of there before things get too hairy. Cody's son child is confused. What is the proper path? Where is this proper path, he wonders. Using violence to save two rebels would be a gross violation of principle, of the lessons learned in fire and blood. Yet, not to save them would be the same. And what of his beloved city? So Cody sends those summoned soul demon thingies to attack the Imperial fleet. But he ends up bringing them back because of his beliefs. And then he dies. And then the city is destroyed. Everything he believed in is gone. There's nothing left of him or his followers either. Chewie, I know he really believed that if he allowed his violent nature free reign, he'd be lost forever, so he created a dream city where he could live in peace. But he was wrong. Lofty ideals alone just aren't enough when dealing with the Empire, as he found out. Lando and Chewie could destroy the Imperial fleet, but they choose not to, because the fleet's hyperdrive is damaged, and without it, the Imperial fleet would be stuck in this dimension forever. And Lando thinks that's a better punishment than blowing him up. He calls this Sun Child's Revenge. No, they're leaving. Come back. You cannot deny us the glory of death. You cannot. Lando Calrissian turns his ship in the direction of the rapidly closing dimensional doorway, and the search for Han Solo goes on. Convince your friends and family to buy junk in this pyramid scheme, directed at children. Ask for Jill. This definitely ranks about a 9.0 on my weird shit meter The funniest thing to me about this comic is like picturing a kid from the 80s going up and, look and seeing this huge monster in the Millennium Falcon flying away from this huge monster as it's just destroying an Imperial fleet and just thinking this is going to be so f***ing badass. And then when you open it up and read it, just kind of like a tale of somebody who lost their way and then found a new path and, you know, created a dream city in his in his woo-woo brain and and uh, and his principles end up getting him killed. <laughs> like, yeah, 1981, man. Kid going into a comic shop, seeing this hulking pink beast who appears in like one frame of the comic. The marketing department definitely did a good job selling this one for sure. Cody's son child, I guess, felt a lot of remorse for what he had become, or rather what he had done in the name of a cause. And that weighed on him heavily and his followers heavily so much. So much so that they created a dream world in another dimension where they just lived a completely peaceful existence. But even in their little utopian bubble, complete peace wasn't a guarantee. There were wolves constantly at the door. And when that door was just opened a crack, they found their way in. And instead of defending their peaceful utopia, even briefly from evil, from oppression, Sunchild chose to let it all burn. It's an interesting idea for a story. There have certainly been religious sects in the real world who practice this type of pacifism, peace over everything, peace over anything mentality, right? But it's hard to disagree with Lando here. I understand that you're remorseful, son child, but you know, you've made amends. You've literally made a city of peace in a dreamland. You understand what you were and what you are now. And when you're unwilling to defend everything you've built and everyone who has followed you, I don't know if those principles that you died for stacked up too well. And that's it from the dreams of Cody Sunchild, or as the cover was marketed, the Dreadnought Devourer. There were so many of these, you know, off the wall, weird Star Wars Marvel comics back in the day. I have a bunch of them. I haven't read them for some of them I've never read, but I definitely haven't read any of these in decades. All of these comics were actually at the bottom of the plastic bin that had all of those um, episode one, the Phantom Menace figures that I unboxed a couple weeks ago. Maybe it's been longer than that now. And uh, when I saw them, I was like, oh man, I should, um, I should look into these and, and just kind of make goofy videos about them. Um, so that's what, what in the box is going to be all about. I, I might literally just put like pile a bunch of Star Wars stuff into this box, uh, and you know, just pull something out. It might be an action figure. 
It might be a comic. Uh, it might be a collector's Revenge of the Sith pin from 2005. Like a pin. Like a, uh, like a writing pin. Not like a, a jean jacket dead Kennedy's pen, but like a, like a writing pen. Okay. It might be something like that. I think it's a fun series to start. We'll see how it goes. Let me know if you like it. It sounds fun to me. So have you ever read Cody's Sun Child? Have you ever read the Dreadnought Devourer? Chances are you probably haven't. Are you going to get it now? Are you? I doubt it.